There's a divide between our young people in the city. Young people think young adults don't understand them. Young adults think we understand youth and they're saying we don't understand them. What I'm trying to tell you is there is a problem. Because we seem to be in this city, we seem to be going through the same problems all, of, all the time. But then it's, it's the storm came. The storm came called Katrina. And the, the Katrina meant destruction. Everything got wiped away. And next thing I know, the craziest thing happened as I was in my newsroom listening to stories of people trying to come back. They, didn't, they wanted to come back. There was no neighborhoods. There were no neighbors. There were no houses. There were no schools. There were no businesses. There were no jobs because they love this place called New Orleans. The only thing I don't understand sometimes is how come we don't act like it? See, I want to tell you all something because there's some confusion going on. See, everyone talks about this old African proverb all the time. It's a, it takes an entire village to raise a child. But that also means I'm a professional question asker. And I got one question. What happens if the village is messed up? I'm sitting here talking to you right now about a young man who's been accused of a crime that made national headlines. My personal feelings, I feel like I failed a little bit. We're talking about a young man who was told at the age of 12 there was a 0% chance of him being adopted. I think when you start to analyze the problem, the problem actually starts with job opportunities, especially for young African Americans. When you look at the jobless rate, it ticks up to about 40%. Um, when you looked at the Great Depression in the 1920s and 30s, jobless rate was about 19-20%, so it's almost double. And I think the problem starts with there with opportunities. And because the lack of opportunities, people turn to, unfortunately, a life of crime. New Orleans has a crime problem because of multi-generational oppression of black people and minorities. Once you have that type of oppression for five and six generations, you've never really allowed a group of people to reach their full potential. It's, uh, it, it rivals uh, in terms of ferocity uh, uh, and, and randomness, it rivals what was happening in the uh, late 80s and early, early 90s and in early 2000s. It, it's similar. Now, there are a couple of contributing factors, the amount of heroin and fentanyl and, and cheap dope that's on the street. Uh, the amount of guns that are able to get into this town and the fact that we still haven't dealt with the root causes and we're still using a law enforcement tough on crime mentality and not a prevention and intervention mentality. When I first found out that he was accused of this heinous crime, I sent his mugshot over to a young man that was basically his roommate in foster care and he was coming home late at night and was telling you, telling me, saying, hey, Mr. Francis, I'm gonna go out and find him, but I gotta go look in the park because at the time of this incident occurred, I know this young man was homeless and hungry. Uh, for too many decades, New Orleans has wanted to fight crime one way uh, with one system. So uh, there's never been a sustainable, sustainable effort uh, to get to the root causes uh, of what's caused so much crime uh, in such a small city. We need to give all these kids opportunities, even after the time when they start get out of jail, give them opportunities because if we don't give them opportunities to make a living, then negatively they're going to have a negative impact on the community. You can take a kid that's born on St. Charles Avenue and he may not be the sharpest tack on the board, but if you expose him to the best schools in the world and give him the supportive nature that he needs in a family unit, then he's going to do well. So when you talk about crime, crime comes out of desperation. If you have no opportunity and you have no support, then you have desperation. And that's what the crime problem is in the world. I thank God for those victims who unfortunately suffered a lot of pain that night. Their compassion should be an example to all of us. It should be a wake up call. These same individuals who were victimized and hurt pretty badly showed up in court on behalf of those that were accused of hurting them. Uh, black people uh, have the responsibility of changing the image of what happened with the black males. It happens in the household. It should happen in the school. It should happen on the team. It should happen in the business. It should happen with public policy and politics. And then the second part of that is, advertisers uh, have to accept the fact that we can be viewed as positive uh, when they make money and when they capitalize off us. We don't have to open up our homes to every young person, but we should at least do what we can to support programs that are out there to help young people. I just really hope 
if we don't do anything else, we learn from this incident. We learn from the victims, and we learn about the story of the young men who were accused. If we don't, like the title says, it's gonna be a fire next time.